Florida State receives a low rating on campus safety. The football lottery reveals its winners. And what are you doing for New Year's? All this and much more next on the special final edition of FSU Live. Welcome to this special edition of FSU Live. FSU Live is a student-produced news magazine show that delivers the latest news, weather, sports, and entertainment to the Florida State community. I'm Megan Boo. And I'm Kelly Penton. Florida State administrators are reviewing tonight a report that was presented by APBnews.com. They are a national internet organization that recently gave Tallahassee, Florida State, and FAMU a 9 out of 10 rating placing this area classified as unsafe. Many administrators are disputing the poll results, saying that the computing procedure is inaccurate. Florida State University officials released the list to buy those, elgi those eligible to buy one of these 1,600 available tickets. The student that were not part of that lucky group to receive tickets be began camp camping out today in hopes to snag some of those unclaimed passes to the Sugar Bowl. If the campers still miss out on the chance of getting that desired pass, officials say they can look for New Orleans packages that include tickets to the game. The Sugar Bowl will take place on January 4th. So what are you doing for the Millennium New Year's celebration? FSU Live's Megan Berry was on campus to investigate. We're on campus to ask students what are their New Year's Eve plans and what are some of their resolutions. I think that I'm going to just stay home with my family and be with them for the holiday. Um, I am going to be in Tampa with my friends. Well, I'll be ringing in the new year in Fort Lauderdale, which is a hell of a lot more exciting than Tallahassee. <laughs> Probably going to West Palm Beach, going to do some partying down there with some friends that I haven't seen in a while. I'm going skiing in Colorado, and then we're going to Las Vegas. Spending it in Charleston on the beach, and I'm going to be able to have fun with my friends that I haven't seen in a long time. Well, I'm going to New Orleans for the Sugar Bowl. I'm the third and fourth though, so I'm not going to make it there for New Year's Eve, so I guess me and my friends are just going to kick back. And I'm probably going to spend time with my friends from back home or with my mom and family for the New Year. I'm planning to have this really fat party at home in Maryland, represent woohoo! I am working full time and walking away with a lot of money. I'm going to um, stay home and lock all the doors and watch the chaos. I'm going to probably stay home with, you know, family folks and just, um, Drink some wine and... Be normal? Yeah, yeah, watch it on TV, maybe play with the dog a little bit, you know. I am going to South Carolina with some friends of mine to go hiking. Maybe South Beach, maybe home. Don't know yet, but I'm excited. I'll be flying to uh, Rio de Janeiro. With, wow. Yeah, with my girlfriend. We're going to spend the night. Just in case, you know, there's a, like a Y2K scare. And do you have any resolutions? Not usual. <laughs> um, my friend Brad was suggesting that I work at a soup kitchen. Do you have any resolutions? Uh, uh, to be a better person, <laughs> to grow, just to experience and be, be bigger in the new millennium. Resolution. <laughs> resolution, try to, try to put on some uh, muscle mass, like, like always, it never happens. But, uh. And do you have any resolutions? Do I have any resolutions? The same as every year, lose some weight, but it doesn't work. My resolution is to get up to New York this year? Uh, not really, I really can't think of any. I guess to have a better work ethic and be more focused on school and not hang out so much. And... To get finished with school. Don't have any. <laughs> um, I'm, no, actually I don't. And I think it's time that the world started changing for me. So I think the world needs to have some resolution. I resolve to quit smoking. My New Year's resolution is to be more responsible in my personal life as well as my social life. Well, not yet. If I live, I'll, I'll probably make them up at the beach, uh, January 1st. Probably eat a little better. I eat a lot of garbage, a lot of pizza. Great. Guthrie's. Great. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Guthrie's. So. Thank you. Everyone have a happy new year. This has been Megan Barry for FSU Live. Thank you so much. 
While in college, many students experience a variety of extreme activities, but FSU Live's Mark Pinchek takes extreme to the limit in this report from Quincy. Um, similar. Bored with school and can't wait for the semester to end? Well, about 25 minutes west of Tallahassee is a school that students are falling for, literally. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I've jumped seven times. Yeah, I've made 74 jumps. 752 jumps. I've got about 1,700 jumps. 5,600 something jumps. That's right, it's skydiving. Here at the Quincy Airport is the School of Human Flight, a training facility designed to educate people in the art of skydiving, from the proven veteran to the thrill-seeking beginner. But what many people may not realize is that there are several methods of jumping. The school's owner and chief instructor explains. You, you can choose three different ways to begin skydiving. And basically, the first thing you want to decide is do you want to jump with an instructor, which would be a tandem jump, where you actually are physically attached to the instructor, and you share one big giant parachute that was especially designed to carry two people. If you want to do it by yourself, but you really don't want to free fall right in the beginning, you'd do a static line jump. And that's where you jump out of the plane alone, but there's a line attached to the plane that opens the parachute automatically. Uh, if you want to go for a free fall, but you don't want to go tandem with an instructor attached to you, then you would do what's called an accelerated free fall. That allows you to have a nice long free fall wearing the parachute yourself. You pull your own rib cord and then fly the parachute to the ground with radio assistance. So what motivates and inspires people to jump out of a perfectly good airplane? I just wanted the thrill of skydiving. Wanted the experience. Always wanted to do it. Actually, one of my buddies wanted to do it since he was a since he was a kid, and he talked me into it. And we did our first jump, and ever since then, he hasn't been back. But I, I've been jumping ever since. It was definitely the most exciting thing I've ever done. Scuba diving, racing motorcycles, nothing comes close to this. It's as close to flying as you'll ever get. It's just a really good way to relax. It is the most adrenaline-filled sport that you can think of. You can say it's fun, it's exciting, it's a rush, it's an adrenaline rush, it's great, it's peaceful, it's stress relieving. There's a million words to describe it, but there's just no way to convey the feeling. It just can't be done. Now we've heard what it's all about from these frequent flyers, and we can see what it's like here on the ground. But to give you a better idea of what it's like up there, we'll have to take you for a ride. Let's go. But to experience it, you have to do it yourself. Now, if you decide to continue your participation in this adrenaline-filled sport, the school's instructors are willing to offer additional steps and pointers, such as packing your own chute and other advanced techniques that will help improve your performance in and out of the sky. But most importantly is the in-depth debriefing that each student attends after every jump. During this meeting, 
The jump masters discuss, evaluate, and document the student's skydiving performance and ultimately decide when the student is ready for advancement to the next jump level. But be careful, this sport is known to become highly addictive. From Quincy Airport, this is Mark Penchek for FSU Live. Blue skies! As the days draw closer to Christmas, the weather seems to be getting cooler. So what are students doing to keep warm? FSU Live's Andrew Greenwich investigates this hot question. That's right. It's that time of year again when Jack Frost is out there nipping at your nose. That's why I went out to Florida State's campus to find out what things students are doing to stay warm this winter. Yeah, it's uh, pretty cold out here, you know, doubling up on the shirts, uh, trying to stay inside as much as possible. Um, I don't know, the best thing I'd say is, like, be with someone you love, you know, so we can stay warm all the time. Drink lots of hot chocolate, definitely. Curl up on the couch with my dog at my feet. I have a big jacket, I prepare myself a um, glass of hot wine near the fireplace and just stay warm. You get you get you get plenty of clothes on. Things you gotta wear you gotta wear light things, three or four light things that you can fold up and throw in your backpack as the day goes on because that's the thing about Florida, it's cold in the morning, and then it's about seventy in the afternoon. So you take it all off and you can stuff it in your backpack. It's not that cold. Uh, I'm from New York, so this is nice weather. It's cool to have. Watching the weather channel and making sure that I know what temperature is going to be outside so I know how to dress. To stay warm this winter, I like I bought a skull cap and like gloves like that. And then I also have a coat that I could zip up or button. And then I also have a jacket in case it's not too cold this winter. <laughs> of course, the jacket, but I had the terrible mistake of getting this hair cut in the wrong month. I mean... <laughs> I, I feel a halo of cold air around, you know, all the time, but it's okay. I will survive. Basically, we're just cutting the heater on and buying winter clothes for us and for him. We brought a $200 jacket, you know, uh, we bought some high socks, and I went about the gloves, and I got the fireplace at my house, so I mean, I should be pretty warm this winter. It doesn't matter what method you choose to stay warm this winter, as long as you come prepared. Freezing my buns off for FSU Live. This has been Andrew Greenwich. So what will the weather be like for finals week? Here's student meteorologist Sean Vigneri live from the FSU Weather Center. Well, thank you, Megan. Uh, we had a beautiful day here in Tallahassee. Uh, the skies were clear and a nice cool temperatures. Uh, not too cool in the morning, but as it cooled down, as you can see for our high today, uh, we actually, if we had the graphics uh, come up, we'll see high today was 75. So nice warm day normally, or actually 67. Normally 75, so it was a bit cooler. Uh, normal for our low was 51, about 10 degrees lower than our normal 41. And here's our records set back in 1981 of uh, 1987, 81, and 24 back in 1927. Well, our almanac shows us no rain today. As I said, no clouds in the area for the month. We did have about 15 hundredths of an inch. Normally about just over an inch, and we are over a foot in departure, so it is pretty dry out there. As we take a look at the water vapor loop for the past 12 hours, you can see a uh, big dry air mass that has begun to break up, uh, bringing in some moisture. This moisture probably won't bring in much rain. Maybe on into Monday we'll see that, but right now the weather maker is in over uh, northeast, northwest Louisiana. There is a low-level jet bringing in, some, uh, bringing in some moisture. You can see, take a look at the satellite for the past 12 hours. You can see that uh, line of, of showers develop. Uh, there is some expectance of some severe showers to develop. Uh, but over here into Tallahassee, no clear skies. Uh, the system probably will move into our area around Monday, bringing us some showers. We'll take a look at the, our current uh, low temperatures for tonight. We should see about 50s for us here in Tallahassee, all the way down in the Great Big Bend, uh, 60s for South Florida. And for tomorrow's highs, 70s for, most, uh, for all of South Florida, all along the Gulf Coast, some 60s, some cooler temperatures up to the north. Again, it'll be nice and pleasant here tomorrow. Well, let's take a look at the Rattler game for this weekend in Youngstown State. At 1 o'clock, partly cloudy and cool, actually cold. Lows around, right around 30 degrees around kickoff. So it'll be pretty cool if you're making your way up there. Our forecast for tonight, 54 degrees with some light south winds. Again, not, pretty nice. Some fog will be developing late due to that moisture moving in. But uh, So if you're making your way around early in the morning, be careful. Our forecast for tomorrow looks like this, 73 degrees with a southwest wind 10 to 15 miles an hour. Mostly cloudy, possible shower uh, for tomorrow. But again, pretty nice. Uh, the clouds will move in probably later on in the day. Let's take a look at our four-day forecast. We'll see those showers begin on Monday. But the weekend looking pretty good, 74, 73, and uh, 45. And here's the temperatures 
around Monday and Tuesday around 68 and 69. Thanks. Now back to you, Megan. The administra administration wanted us to remind all students attending the National Championship game on January 4th in New Orleans that they must contact the Office of the University Registrar no later than 5 p.m. on January 4th and receive a confirmation number in order to be excused from attending classes on January 5th. After the break, FSU Live will take a look back at the most important, interesting, and touching stories from the fall semester. Please stay tuned for this special review show. Lonnie? 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 Lonnie! Lonnie! FSU Live, a new set, new faces, a new idea. Monday through Thursday on Channel 47. Hi, I'm Megan Barry. Watch FSU Live Monday through Thursday on Channel 47. I'm going to whip them here, or they are going to whip me. Suddenly, the Union artillery on Cemetery Ridge and Little Round Top opened fire, and a great moan went up from the Confederate line. 51,000 men lost. As the rebels staggered back, Lee rode out to meet them. All this has been my fault, he told them. Step baby with FSU Live every Monday through Thursday at 6:30 and 10:30 only on channel 47. You are watching FSU Cable Channel 47, Florida State University's Educational Access Channel.